Listen to me. We have preached a false Christ for years in the church. We have preached about a Jesus that is not really the Jesus of Scripture. We have created a scenario where people can come to church and get excited about something that they're not even converted to. The greatest hindrance to the spontaneous working of the Spirit is men. We have allowed ourselves by default to fall into man-made molds and ideologies and personas of what we're supposed to say and how we're supposed to act and how we're supposed to teach and how we're supposed to preach. Listen, there must come an hour where people get desperate to simply walk and live in the Spirit. And you don't have to be a preacher to minister the Gospel anymore. heart is desperate for something real. Not just something so we can stand back and say that we're apostolic now. Thank God for words. Listen, there's a lot of great words. Prophetic, apostolic, fivefold, team ministry, all these things. Listen, I believe in all of them. But what good are they if we're not living it? What do they produce? And what do they bring about if lives are not radically being touched and changed by the glory of God through, his, through a passion for His heart? What good is it for me to stand here today and preach a gospel I don't even live? What good is it to build an idol that we call ministry and exert noble religious effort in order to keep something up before the people so they'll think we're of God. If there's not a passion and a hunger for reality among the people of God. Lily of the valley Bright and morning star Fairest of ten thousand you are How can I perceive your beauty? I believe there is something in the heart of this generation that yearns for something real. Something they can see and experience. Something that will do more than excite them to stay in church for three years because there's glory when it first starts. And then they find themselves waylaid by the enemy years down the road because what they thought was real was not real. I'm disturbed that the enemy has inroads even into our students and into some of our missionaries and messes with them psychologically and mentally and physically and oftentimes all we do is go through the motion of saying a prayer hoping that it's going to change listen what happened to the authority to believe God for something real because we need his touch and his glory in this generation help me find your grace Jesus What was it that possessed Paul and Peter and those men to where they were willing to go into any city of their day? I mean, Paul peppered the Mediterranean sea basin with churches. But listen to me. As we heard last night, where he went, there was either revival or there was a riot. Why? Because he was consumed with passion for this man called Jesus. There is a generation that is free falling into hell while we sit here and preach to each other this afternoon. Or the church around the world comes together and sings and has, listen, thank God for conferences, but listen to me, we've got a conference about everything except the reality of the glory of Jesus. 
We've got marriage seminar conference. We've got income or money management conferences. We've got revolution con. We've got all. And listen, I know there's good. I know hearts are touched and all this and that. But listen, the early church didn't have to get a conference to get excited about doing something for God. It was normal to them. Evan Roberts didn't have to go to a conference the week before the Welsh Revival started. He was consumed with the burden of God's heart. It's not normal not to have the touch of God in our lives if we're the children of God. It is not normal for us to run around with our religious mindset and hope that God's going to move like He did on Father's Day of 95. Or hope that God's going to do what He did like He did at the Welsh Revival or the Azusa. Listen, it's normal to walk in the Spirit and heal the sick and cleanse the leopard and raise the dead and cast out demons and win the lost for the glory of God. That's a normal Christian life. My children have my name. That's normal with my name. They have part of my identity. They have my love. They have my heart. They get money before I get money. They get clothes before I get clothes. They get food before I get food. That's normal. We know how to be noble and our efforts are religious, but they get us nowhere but running around the religious bush hoping one day we can climb a tree and touch the glory of God. Coming to that threshold and doing more than walk, doing more than walking up to the door and sticking your toe in for a month and bringing it back out. Doing more than walking up to the pool and sticking your foot in and bringing it back out. No, there's a plunge that has to be taken. God, if it's character, Lord, I know that men throughout history have abused their giftings of God. They had anointing, but they, they lack in character. God, you expose so many of them. Father, if we need to be exposed, if it's an element of character in our lives, Lord God, then let it be more real to us than anybody else, God. God, if it's unbelief, if it's sin, if it's hypocrisy, whatever it is, God, I don't know what it is in all of our lives. I don't even know what it is completely in my life. But God, I'm being real and I'm desperate for something more. We're hungry for something more. God, right now, all I know to do is just ask for you to come. Just come, Jesus. Just come, Lord. Just come, Jesus. Let your fire burn in our hearts, God. Let us know you as we've never known you, Jesus. Burn up every idea we have, Lord God. Let us start back in kindergarten. Whatever, it doesn't matter, God. Consume our identity and give us your identity. Forgive us for our selfish hearts. Forgive us for envy and pride and hypocrisy, God. Forgive us, Lord God, for anything, Lord God, that we've done and said, anything we've been a part of that you're not a part of, God. Oh, God, bring us back to home plate this afternoon and reveal your heart to us. I pray right now, Lord God, that a spirit and a hunger, Lord God, a sense of desperation would come alive in us. God, that we could not take another step unless you're with us, God. We are hungry. We are desperate. We are thirsty for more of you, God. Our hearts yearn and they cry for reality, Lord God. Oh, God, forgive us for preaching about something we don't even know about. We don't have the answers, God. We know that you do, and we yield to you right now, God. Oh, God. God, our very bodies yearn for you. Our soul craves you, God. Consume us, Lord. 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 Create in us a new heart, oh Lord. Renew a right spirit within us, God. Make us normal, Lord. To be 
you're still the Lord is our heart cry. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I believe a desperate church is irresistible to the Father. A desperate church is irresistible to God. God will answer. God will show up. God will show forth His glory and His power in a generation of believers that's hungry and desperate for more of His glory, for passion that goes beyond human ambition. Oh, God, consume us with that. Consume us with that.